Today we're going to be checking out MSI's GX Destroyer model. They do make a couple different ones. There is a GX60, which is a 15.6 inch. In front of us today we have the GX70, which is the 17.3 inch. Now what MSI normally does is the GX models denotes it's a AMD setup. So we have the AMD CPU, and this is the A10 series. 5750M quad core 2.5 to 3.5 gigahertz and then a AMD GPU in there as well it's the R9 M290X and this has a new mantle support on it I'll talk about that here a little bit later uh, but we're gonna go over the basics on the reports go into a little benchmarking show you some features on it pop it open uh, kind of the stuff that we normally do with our video reviews. All right, we're gonna do an unboxing of the MSI computer here for you. Let's go ahead and pop this up. Open up the lid, you'll find the computer here. Off to the side, a little accessories box, you're gonna find the AC adapter, power cord on there, as well as the battery. They really don't come installed in the computer anymore, so you do have to take that out. Put that in. And got your power cable here, AC adapter right here, and right here is, of course, the computer itself. That's where your battery is going to go. Um, a lot of times, you may need to find a serial number. You're also going to find that printed out underneath of here too. I got the protective sleeve on it and you do open it up to get the sleeve off. So open it up. Right off there, you get the computer. Then underneath of it, you got your materials, your driver's utilities, um, quick owner's manual on there, warranty card. And that's going to be underneath of the computer there. So that's the unboxing. All right, we're going to take a look at the screen, some viewing angles. This is, again, a 1920 by 1080 full high def screen. It is a matte type. And it's an LCD with LED backlighting. So we're looking, obviously, straight on with it. I'm going to spin it off so you can see the viewing angles here. With the LCD screens, they're not going to be quite as good as IPS screens. You're going to notice it's starting to wash there. Pretty much you have no viewing angle there, but we're a good 160 degrees off center here. Uh, spin it right back. you got good color coming back pretty quickly here. Spin off to the right, and you should expect to see the same thing there. So once you get to about 160 degrees, you're going to start losing it. It doesn't wash out too bad, but... You just don't have as much viewing angles there. So going straight on, you can see from there and when it'll start to come back for you, right in there. Go ahead and lean it back so you can see the viewing angles. You'll notice it does lean back quite a bit and we haven't lost much there. Let's pull it back up and pull it down for you. Now the screen might turn off. Normally happens. Computers think you're going to close it so it will automatically shut it off. But overall, pretty good viewing angles here, especially for uh, a TN type panel instead of IPS. Nice, good quality screen there. All right, we're going to go over the port so you can see what you're working with here. Looking on the left hand side, first is going to be one of the exhaust vents. As you're gaming, doing anything that's intensive or just normal use, you're going to have to pump out air. This is going to be one of the vents that it comes out of. So that's on your left hand side, followed by two USB 3.0 ports, and these are the super speeds. You can usually tell that most manufacturers use a blue colored, as you see here, uh, USB 2.0 or typically black in color, followed by a memory card. And then you have one more USB 3.0 port here. 
and then you have four audio jacks. So you have your headphone, you have your microphone, line in and line out. Get it off to the front here. You're gonna find five battery indicator lights, excuse me, five indicator lights. Uh, one of them's just for the battery here. So the middle one's the battery. Left-hand side's Bluetooth, wireless, again, battery. You have the sleep mode here. The lid is closed, so that's why it's blinking that way. And then we have our hard drive activity light. You can spin it off to the right-hand side. First two ports that you're going to see are USB ports. And these are going to be your USB 2.0 ports. And again, black in color is just mentioned there, followed by your optical drive. This model does come with a Blu-ray, DVD, CD. I'm going to spin it off to the back. And what you're going to find, the very first one is going to be your Kensington lock for your security. AC plug-in, so obviously that's where you power it. Got your Ethernet here. And they do use the Killers E2200, and that's really optimized for online gaming. It'll prioritize gaming packets, so your latency is going to be a little bit lower. Got your VGA port, mini display port, and then HDMI. And they've actually included uh, 4K output support on here. So obviously, if you keep up with technology, 4K is all, the, all they're talking about with TVs right now, and this will support 4K output resolution. The screen itself is not 4K, but if you have a 4K TV or external monitor, you can hook it up and get that. Lastly, we're going to get the second vent here. And you got one here, the other here. So they kind of put them right in the same corner. And on the right hand side, again, that was a vent. On the left hand side, they uh, haven't put anything there. So it's just kind of blocked. So that'll show you pretty much uh, what you got around the computer. All right, let's take a look at the keyboard. As you can tell, it is backlit and it is zoned. This is the default color setting. It's red, green, blue, and the keyboard is by SteelSeries, which we typically find on MSI's higher end models. Any of their GT, GX models can have the SteelSeries multicolor backlit. Uh, it is zoned. You can assign it how you like. There's software included that you can go through and you know pick what colors you want where. Um, the function minus function plus on the number pad will also change the brightness on there also changes the colors the tones as well you can do that right on your keyboard or again use the software that's built into it continuing our look at the keyboard now as mentioned earlier this one is by steel series and we're going to see if we can get it to flex uh, and what the flex looks like just on normal typing here so if i'm just typing away and you can see Really no flex at all. And this would be just, you know, how the average person uses the keyboard. Now, if you start to really press down, it is going to flex, but this is gonna happen with anything. If you purposefully try to make the keyboard flex, it's gonna do it. Um, but Steel Series is considered top end for keyboard quality. Uh, and uh, this definitely is not an exception. Uh, feel very comfortable typing on this keyboard, chiclet style keyboard. Uh, again, they've done a good job on this one. All right, let's take a look above the keyboard, see what they got going on. We're gonna start off with the speaker. A lot of the GT models will use Dyna Audio. This model does not, it's the GX, and they do uh, have a nicer one, is Sound Blaster Cinema. Maybe not quite as good as your Sound Blaster, but it is still a good quality sound on there. Uh, first indicator light we have here is gonna be your media. So you can hit that, media player is gonna come up. This is gonna be the fan, so it's a cooler boost. Uh, they're cool boost 2.0. I'll hit that, you'll see it come on, and then you can take a listen to the fan. You can hear it's kicked up, and that's just to help with cooling. Hit it again, it'll toggle, toggle it off. Continuing down, this is your backlight on and off, or backlight keyboard on and off, I should say. So you turn that on, turn it off, and that's how you can control that. Got your power after that. Here you got your Wi-Fi on and off. It's a picture of an airplane. So airplane mode is most of, uh, most of you are familiar with your cell phones, and that'll turn your Wi-Fi off. 
This will turn the screen on and off. And then you have your G button, and what that brings up is just Windows 8 mobility. And then just lastly, just your power indicator light on there. So those are the indicator lights above the keyboard. All right, going to show you the internals of the computer. This is the battery compartment. I went ahead and removed that. Obviously, you don't want the battery in there when you take it apart. I've also unplugged the power, so there's no power going to the computer. There's going to be a few screws. You should be able to easily see them, undo those, and then you're going to have to pr lift up, pry. There are little plastic latches that go around, making it a little bit harder to get the bottom off. Uh, but if you're careful about it and really take a look at what you're doing, you should have no issue taking it off. Once you've done that, this is going to be the bottom panel that comes off and shows you really what you need to get to in the computer. Right, now that I have the bottom panel taken off, we'll go over what's internally on the bottom of the computer. Starting off again, this is where the battery goes. It's taken off. The AC power is unplugged. Obviously, you don't want any power going through it when you have access and all the components showing like this. Right above it. You can have the second hard drive bay. You can add a solid state drive, get faster read write times. Add a regular hard drive in there, get you more storage room. Going off to the right, we're going to have the heat, um, copper heat transfer pipes, and that's going to be right above the graphics card. So you can't see it, but the GPU is underneath of that. And what those do, they feed into the fins right over where the fan is. So you have a set of fins here, set of fans, uh, excuse me, set of fins here and that's where it's going to exhaust out now you might notice this is a single fan design which msi has done on this model they've also done it on their gt models an advantage of that is it gets good battery life uh you know you're not powering two fans you're just powering one so it's going to be a little less power draw from the battery all right going from there you're going to get the second heat transfer pipe and that's going to go to the cpu so the cpu is underneath there Right to the left of it, you have two RAM slots. Now, this model only has two RAM slots. Some others can go up to four. They'll have two here, two on the other side. But this maxes out at just two, so you can do 16 gigs of RAM max on it. Underneath of that, going to be the primary hard drive bay. This comes with a one terabyte 7200 RPM as the default hard drive. 7200 RPM kind of something new. Most of the one terabytes that we've seen previously are 5400. So having a, a faster drive is going to get you faster boot times, faster read write times, uh, you know, uh, pulling up larger files quicker. But if you want to get real fast speeds, add that second SSD right in there. So that's going to really go uh, cover the bottom of the computer for you. Um, except for this, didn't mention it earlier, that is where your subwoofer is. So that should cover the bottom. All right, let's take a look at the BIOS. Got the computer off, pretty simple to get into it. You just turn it on, continually hit delete. Then it'll take you right into the BIOS. As with most notebooks, you're not gonna find a whole lot of options in here. You got the make, the model, system date, system time. You do have the SATA information. There's gonna be a total of four SATA ports shown there's three of them on here. So you have your two hard drives and then your optical drive. Uh, if you don't like that optical bay, you can swap it out for another hard drive if you like. They all will work at uh, SATA three speeds, up to six gigabit per second. Okay, so we'll back out of here. System information just gives you uh, your BIOS version, EC, uh, the type of RAM that you have in there, how much RAM. Uh, obviously, it's just system information out there. So let's go up, go over to the advanced. You got your power now, disable, enable, PCI latency timer, SATA mode selection, ACHI, RAID is supported. So if you add a second hard drive on there, and if there are two identical ones, you can RAID them if you like. Uh, IDE is an option as well. But typically you're gonna want either RAID if you have two or more hard drives set up. And if you wanna put them in RAID one or RAID zero, and AHCI if you want separate um, separate hard drive configuration on there. Okay, there's the eye charger. So what that does, you can connect a USB device to it. If the computer's off and your AC adapter's plugged in, it'll continue to charge it. USB configuration on there, uh, not much to mess around with in there. So you can go back. You got your boot priorities. So you can turn the number lock on or off as you boot off. 
Um, you got your boot mode select, and that's a UEFI, pretty typical with Windows 8. Then you have your boot options here. So your hard drive, CD drive, you can go through all those and you know put whatever you want on there. If you're reformatting, uh, you want to put your CD drive as your primary one, so it boots from your disk first. Okay, you can go the UEFI hard disk drive BBS priorities. Now, if we had multiple hard drives in here, you could tell it which hard drive you wanted to pick uh, as the first one to boot from. In case you had an OS on each one, but you want the solid state drive to boot first, you would pick it there. Okay, security, you set a password if you want to, and there's your save and exit. So there's really not a whole lot you can do here. Uh, the boot options is might, might be one thing that you do, uh, and setting up the RAID if you add a second hard drive on there. So that really covers the BIOS. As with all of them, hit F10, save and reset, or escape, won't save anything, and you can just exit right out of there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run 3D Mark Vantage just to check out the scores that this computer can do. Um, set the microphone in closer to the vents, so hopefully it'll be more representative of the noise level changes that you'll hear once the benchmark gets gone. Now as we run this, I'm also going to be shooting some pictures with our forward-looking infrared, or flare gun, so you can see really what temperatures to expect. Uh, obviously things are going to get warmer as you are demanding more out of the graphics card, which a benchmark program is designed to do. Uh, so check it out. Well, here's the 3D Mark Vantage score results. Not as high as we'd like to see. Keep in mind, these new AMD cards really are geared towards their new Mantle technology. If you're not familiar with Mantle, it's really made to compete with DirectX. Now, a lot of the 3D Mark Vantage programs or 3D Mark programs in general have a lot to do with DirectX uh, capability and how well it performs. Now, since this is more geared towards Mantle, it's not going to be as good. Now, it's Future games come out like uh, Battlefield 4 that do take advantage of Mantle. You can definitely see a bigger improvement in those gaming performances compared to a video card that is designed to use DirectX. Uh, just to go over the scores with you real quick. Overall score, 12,899. Got a GPU score, 16,735. CPU, 7,643. As you've probably noticed, I also have hardware monitors showing just to check out the temperatures. Uh, to me, it looks like it might not be reading right, uh, maybe it's just not compatible with these sensors, showing a CPU temperature of 110C, which is really high. Um, it's even showing a minimum of 71C. So those are extremely high tem temperatures. As you may have noticed, the fans really didn't kick up a whole lot on there, so I would expect lower temperatures than that to be the actual values. If you look at the GPU temperatures, 51C is the max. Again, a very low number, uh, especially when you're looking at stress test programs, anything that really works the video card like 3D Mark Vantage does. But those are, uh, are the results, and uh, hopefully we do see better results with other games, maybe some other benchmark programs as well. Well, that's going to about wrap up our look at the MSI GX Destroyer. Again, this one is the GX70. Uh, there is a GX60 model available. Overall impressions, just like their GT models, very good build quality, a lot of features like the Steel Series keyboards. Um, if you're looking for some of the newest technology by AMD, this includes it. Uh, unfortunately, the, the only thing is the games are not caught up to what this can do yet. Uh, hopefully down the road we're going to see a lot more games take advantage of Mantle as well as DirectX. Then we'll really see this hardware start to shine want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out our video. Uh, again, if you like them, please do subscribe. If you have any questions, contact us. It's exoticpc.com. Again, it's www.xoticpc.com. 
and subscribe and you'll see the new ones as we put them up. Hopefully we'll continue to do them as frequently as we have been the last few. Thanks again. Have a good one.